the mummy pops up everywhere in movies and television and really there's no way to cover every single appearance or even every mummy movie proper, but there are still some standout appearances and a lot of ground that we can cover. The mummy as a monster is in the public domain, and that's something worth celebrating. Anybody can put a mummy in their movie. I can mummy, you can mummy, they can mummy, we can mummy. I already know what you're going to ask, and yes, this video is part of a series, and yes, you can just watch this one by itself, but if you want to learn about various phases of the mummy in theatrical movies in history, you can always go back and watch the previous videos. In an effort to be thorough, I always try and get every single movie on the subject. And this time there are just too many, and so many are very low budget and low effort. So to curb our list, I limited myself to just whatever DVDs or Blu-ray movies I had, and then went looking online for any other movies I could find with a higher than 3 rating. You'd be surprised how many Mummy movies have a 2.4 rating. That's out of 10 on IMDb. So even after the Universal Classic era, the Hammer era, the Bram Stoker adaptations, the Aztec mummies, the science fiction mummies, and children's mummy movies, and limiting the ratings from IMDb, there are still another 16 titles to cover here, so let's cut right to it. First, we'll look at the other mummy movies as a prime character, and then I will end with a sort of speed run on a number of movies that have the mummy as a side character. These are in no particular order at all. 1981, The Dawn of the Mummy. A bunch of grave robbers excavating a tomb in Egypt are interrupted by a fashion photographer and a troop of models looking for a cool place to shoot. They're so hot, the lights, not the models, that I guess they melt the mummies back to life, because that's how it works. And then the killings begin in Dawn of the Mummy. If that didn't do it already, let me clue you in quickly as to what kind of caliber film this is. The director's last two films were The Godfather's Friend, The Godfather's Friend, and Queen Kong. And now he tries his hand at a generic mummy movie, maybe to cash in on that sweet awakening moolah. That's a, that's a joke referencing a movie covered in chapter 3, but... You can get the clues from context. It, it was not a box office success. They both came out in 1981, is what I'm saying. The director, Frank Agrama, is actually Egyptian, and maybe the only Egyptian to direct a mummy movie. Not that it happened to matter, as Agrama was clearly an exploitation director, so all the tropes and cultural insensitivities are here. The mummies themselves are more like zombies than movie mummies, as we've come to understand them, and much of the cast and crew was Italian, even though this is technically an American production, so it looks and feels and sounds very much like an Italian zombie movie from the 1980s, and I think it's safe to say that the director of Queen Kong and The Godfather's Second Cousin Twice Removed intentionally was referencing Dawn of the Dead with this title. So for a mummy movie, it's not great, and for a faux Italian zombie movie, it's also not great, but better. 1998, Tale of the Mummy. Russell Mulcahy, director of The Highlander and The Shadow and Resident Evil 3, among others, had his take on The Mummy. You might remember he also directed Scorpion King 2, which I covered in a previous video. This production came along as a way for him to get out of a funk after breaking his leg on a skiing trip. It's got a fair bit going for it, but ultimately ends up pretty unsatisfyingly. For example, Christopher Lee's in it, the first Hammer Horror Mummy, but just in the first 10 minutes. There's a pretty good cast, like Sean Pertwee and Jason Scott Lee, Honor Blackman, and Shelley Duvall, but even they seem to lack any chemistry or engaging dialogue for them to sink their teeth into. The idea of updating the mummy to modern times loses most of the flavor and feel that people think of, and I understand the bold idea of reimagining the classic monster means breaking the rules and taking chances, but it still has to work. Just look at their most distinct and unique idea. The idea that the mummy can travel or attack or just exist as these spidery coils of rags. Granted, the CG needed to pull this off wasn't fully there in 1998, but even if it had been, at its best, the mummy attacks as a cool floating cloth storm, but at its worst, it hides in a men's room towel dispenser and attacks when the dude needs to wipe his hands off on it, and then it suffocates him to death in a toilet stall, and the rags are all brown because they're old. It's a tough scene. 
And while some of the concepts have potential, the execution is not key, both for the thriller story that doesn't quite keep us interested, or the mummy, Talos, who, once he's reached his final form, is a mix of cringy practical makeup effects and rudimentary computer effects. It just doesn't work. But Russell Mulcahy didn't stop there, because seven years later, he comes back with The Curse of King Tut's Tomb in 2006. It's a two-part made-for-TV miniseries, and I think it's better, maybe, maybe. But it's also more cliched and campy. Our leading man is Casper Van Dien, doing a nerdy Indiana Jones. I think that after the Brendan Fraser mummy came out and his tale of the mummy flopped, director Mulcahy took stock and then for whatever reason decided to take another shot at it. Sadly, the script doesn't give Van Dien the charm needed to carry the movie, let alone a three hour epic that's split into two 90 minute movies. Plus the scope of the adventure is pretty ambitious without the budget to support it. So while the locations and performances are pretty good, most effects and creatures are pretty cheesy. I think I like the second attempt more, even though it's more derivative of the mummy lore and tropes and a tone that's closer to more recent mummy movies that were coming out at the time. Crummy fun beats crummy serious every time. 2003 Bubba Hotep. Bubba Hotep from 2003 is a weird kind of nexus of so many fan favorite flavors all thrown into a weirdly perfect gumbo, so let me break it down. This is basically elderly Elvis in a nursing home versus the mummy. Don't make me use my stuff on you, baby. So that's two things people can geek out on, Elvis and The Mummy. Now, Elvis is played by Bruce Campbell, and the movie is directed by the great Don Coscarelli, creator of the phenomenal Phantasm franchise. So that's four prime ingredients, and it's written by Joe R. Lansdale, a master of horror quite literally, and features national treasure Ozzie Davis playing a guy who thinks he's JFK. I'm telling you, it's a gumbo. Just leave my soup metaphor alone. Hey, Jack, what it says here is that if you can bury some dude, if he gets the right ten of leaves and spell set over him and such bullshit that he can come back to life thousands of years later. Man. It's got a very measured and dark deliberate tone to the movie, so prepare for a slow burn. That, that's not a criticism, but this isn't a manic evil dead kind of movie. It is, however, a well-made, unique gothic horror comedy, and it's a gem. Seven Mummies in 2005 is a small budget indie movie trying its best to be some Robert Rodriguez turn like From Dusk Till Dawn but with mummies. That, that's really being too charitable, but the attempt is clear. The story follows a bunch of escaped convicts across the desert as they drag along a pretty prison guard with them. Then they randomly dig up some mummy remains and find themselves at an old western saloon or brothel where all the patrons turn out to be... zombies. And you get where this is going, sort of. It, it really doesn't go anywhere. There are a few familiar faces, Danny Trejo, Billy Drago, Martin Cove, Serena Vincent, a few Fast and Furious refugees, but the movie doesn't really hold up. I had to look up the details of the plot to work this one out, and the lore is deep. It goes back to the conquistadors enslaving natives and mining for gold, and how seven Jesuit priests protecting the gold died of old age and were mummified with the treasure. And then a hundred years later, during the Old West Gold Rush, the miners and the town that it was built on that ground tried to mine that same gold, and the seven mummies turned them into undead ghostly wraiths, and the town, a literal ghost town, is now focused on protecting the gold. And then a hundred years after that, our escaped convicts come wandering into that situation. Too bad it doesn't really come across in the film. Parts are horror, parts are choreographed action fight scenes, but in the end, what was needed was just a better script. 1957, The Pharaoh's Curse. Between the last Universal Classic Mummy movie and the first Hammer Horror Mummy movie, there was clearly a vacuum that needed to be filled in 1957. It was also the year the first Aztec Mummy movie was made, and it was also the year of the Pharaoh's Curse. This is another black and white attempt at, I guess, what I would call the classic Universal style Mummy movie, but simply not connected to those others. The drop in quality is palpable. Yeah, anyway, the biggest holdup for this movie is, interestingly, its most unique feature, and that is the mummy, or lack of one. See, in The Pharaoh's Curse, one of the members of the archaeological dig slowly turns into a mummy. His skin gets dry and flaky, his teeth age, and his hair grays. It's a neat idea, and it's certainly different than all the other mummy movies, 
but ultimately it's just unsatisfying for a mummy movie. It's just an old guy wandering around in his pajamas. The year is 1993. The title is The Mummy Lives. But the real key signifier of what kind of movie this will be is contained in the names of its producers, Golan and Globus. These guys are notorious for making terrible movies and some of the biggest and most high-profile failures of the 80s and 90s. If you want to know more of their story, I highly suggest you track down Electric Boogaloo, the untold story of Canon Films, incredible documentary. You could also track down The Go Go Boys, which is Golan and Globus's own documentary about themselves. It's also good, but actually Electric Boogaloo is the one to see. As for The Mummy Lives, it's just bad in all the ways. Incoherent plot, terrible dialogue, Tony Curtis I guess is the mummy even though he's really just Tony Curtis and really the mummy never really lives so that's a problem. I looked up some reviews online and I love how the biggest insult people seem to have with the movie is that Tony Curtis would even bother with it, that it was beneath him. But that's fair. Check out this 1993 wannabe Sarah Connor moment paintings and stories to guide one into the future why do i feel that even the sky seems familiar to me that even these children's voices sound as my own many years ago but then later on another character also gets an internal monologue right like that's just a mess there's just so much going on with her right now maybe she needs to be alone this doesn't feel right so let's just let this one go here. Better missed than seen, but a mummy movie nonetheless. Heavy on the less. Okay, we're at the speed run portion of this video. I say speed run, but I just mean brevity, not really talking faster. I'm not sidelining these titles because they're not great movies, but because they don't have a prominent mummy or the mummy isn't the main focus. Uh, for example, Cabin in the Woods has a great mummy. Cabin in the Woods is a cool movie, but it's not a mummy movie. There's a whole bunch of different monsters in the movie, and the mummy is just one, but it's still worth watching. Monster Brawl is a fun gimmicky movie about a wrestling match style fight with all the classic monsters as the fighters. Dave Foley is a commentator, and one of the contenders is the mummy. It's lowbrow cheese in good fun, and it's Canadian. Waxwork, 1988. A bunch of teens go to a creepy wax museum and get caught by various classic movie monsters as they come to life and kill them. Dracula, the Wolfman, and the Mummy, very briefly, fans of 80 slashers are going to enjoy this one. Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, 1989, is a fun anthology movie, and the story with the mummy in it has a star-studded cast, including Steve Buscemi, Julianne Moore, and Christian Slater. The mummy is well done and creepy, classic. The Eternal Kiss of the Mummy, 1998. It's a pretty odd and unique mummy movie where the mummy is in Ireland and is a druidic witch haunting a young woman returning home to try and get sober. Christopher Walken features as a kooky uncle and the movie strikes a strange tone, but it's pretty original. The Creeps, 1997, a straight-to-video Charles Band production B-movie with all the substandard performances and cheesy ideas. A scientist builds a machine to bring actual fictitious characters to life. He chooses the universal monsters, but when they are resurrected, the process is interrupted halfway, and so of course they come out as half-size, so like a, a dwarfed Dracula, a, a pint-sized Wolfman, a half-stack Frankenstein, and a midget mummy. And yes, it's supposed to be funny with mixed results, so either this sounds great to you or awful. Either way, you could be right. 1982, Secret of the Mummy. This is a quirky Brazilian effort, the only Brazilian mummy uh, movie, though it's part softcore porn, half in black and white, half in color, and the plot is more Frankenstein with a scientist trying to bring a mummy to life. Uh, it's very artistic and avant-garde and weirdly eccentric. One of the least inspired and most lazy mummy costumes as well. Only completists need seek this one out. Adèle Blanc Sec 2010. This is an adaptation of a Franco-Belgian comic book. Think of uh, a Lady Tintin whose adventures feature pterodactyls hatching, psychic connections, and yes, a living mummy. Probably the most polite of all the mummies on the list, definitely the only one to make a cup of tea. 
This unique Luc Besson adventure romp has exaggerated faces in it like Tintin to better emulate the comic book, and I would really love to dive into the specific comparisons to the comic, but that's not this video. Also, while the mummy as a plot device or story thread does run the length of the movie, and it is easily the most unique mummy movie uh, as far as the plot goes, it's also not what most people are looking for if they want to watch a mummy movie. 2014, The Pyramid. Alexander Aya, who directed the remake of The Hills Have Eyes and High Tension, uh, well, he produced in a found footage movie using mummies as the monster where archaeologists find a new pyramid hidden underground. The director was the writer for Aya on his many movies, including the ones I just mentioned. I personally am biased against found footage movies, but this is barely that. It's like a regular low-budget movie and also, it has some found footage in it. I appreciate the attempt to modernize the horror of what nightmares could be contained within these catacombs, like zombie cats. That's kind of cool. But in the end, the final product just doesn't really hold up. And for our purposes, no actual mummies. So, like, this Anubis monster is nice, but not if it's going to look like this. So that's the end of our speed run portion and the end of the entirely watchable and some unwatchable movies that feature The Mummy. The Mummy transcends genre, having been well used as subject matter for gothic fiction, horror, globetrotting, adventure movies, exploitation, science fiction, children's movies, animated comedies. The Mummy is a big enough star to fit into any circumstance. I hope that you enjoyed this series and if you did, please consider giving this video a like and a follow as always. Thank you for watching.